another day and another Maker Advent and today I'm going back in time. Not all the way back to 1982, 1985, whenever I was a kid and I got my first Commodore 64. That on the screen by the way is not my first Commodore 64. That went years ago when I upgraded to an Amiga. I part exchanged my Commodore 64 and all the games to a local game shop and they gave me credit to get Amiga games. So I had a lot of Amiga games. Yeah, lots. Anyway, this is the one I got, whoa, 2020, this Commodore 64. It's a hodgepodge of all different ones inside. It's not a proper, authentic, pure Commodore 64. It's just got bits and pieces inside it, but it works. And I love it, even if it does have a very strange patina to it. What I'm talking about is the joystick. That's just resting on top of that. This is a photograph from late 2020. When I started building the joystick that I used in the review and in the last video for the Commodore 64 Ultimate. It is a standard nine pin joystick. Plugs into the Commodore 64 as normal. I use some extension leads rather than sacrifice any real leads. And I use some nine pin D sub connections that I got from Amazon for a few quid. And this joystick works exceptionally well. And I do love it. It is a great little joystick. You'll see it's a standard arcade joystick on top. I'll show you those later on. There's also two buttons. The red button is the fire button and the green button actually is the up on the joystick. So if I'm playing a platform game, I can just press that to jump the character rather than having to wangle the joystick. So let's see how I made it. So you can see it's a black project box. I got that from Amazon for probably less than 10 pounds made out of just normal plastic. It's not 3D printed. You don't need a 3D printer for this project. You just need to go on Amazon and get the right part. I'll put a list in the description down below so you can work out which is which. You'll see that I've marked out on the inside of the lid, one, my name, and two, the positions of where I want the screws to go. So that was just a, a silver Sharpie. And for that, all I did was take off the four screws that hold on the metal plate just to underneath the joystick, underneath that black cover, put it on, and then just fill in the holes. I can colour it in, basically. There we go. This is the old desk, but this is where Maker Advent started on this desk five years ago. You can see the marks where glues and on the bottom right where a battery leaked and it ate into the desk. That was good. After marking out the holes, I drill the holes, and there's a selection of drill bits there for me to work out which one to use. I had to use a stepped drill bit just on the bottom right there, so you can see. That stepped drill bit just allowed me to make a, a wider hole for the joystick shaft to go through. And this is me doing a, a test fit there. So I just put them through, secured them in place to check that it all works. And I'm seeing lots of old stuff on this desk right now. Uh, top right is my chip tester to see, wow, what was it? What components were working? So it checks resistance, capacitance, LEDs, diode tests some basic chip functional, like MPN, PMP transistors, that sort of thing. Uh, I can see my old torch, my old pens, uh, Raspberry Pi, let's see, is that a three? Yeah, it looks like a three or a two. Probably a two, actually. No, it's a three. Far left-hand side is a 555 timer, which I was using to test auto fire. So I wanted to add auto fire to this. In the end, I didn't do that, but I may do it one day. In fact, I may redo this entire project one day. So there's the joystick test built. So buttons are in. Those are just standard arcade buttons. They're, they're actually light up ones, but I don't have them set to light up at all. And this is the connection that I used. So as I said, it's a, a joystick extension lead to a 9-pin D-sub. And you can see just about that you can solder onto those connections. And that's what I did. They're tiny. And luckily, they're numbered, so I know which one's which. Very handy. I'll put a pin out on the screen now so you can see roughly how it all Roughly, well, I can't say roughly, I can show you exactly how it connects up. And all I did was just solder up the connections to that relevant pin. And all I did was solder up the connections from that pin on the D sub connection to the appropriate axes on the joystick or the fire button. There's the other side, all fitted into the case. And there's the wire that I was hoping to use in the project. And I did use some of this, but different bits and pieces dictated how I did this project. There's the inside. So the joystick's in place, you can see that, and those are the micro switches. Yes, there's one a different color because one's different. I've had a problem, but they all work, it's fine. 
Um, in hindsight, I wouldn't use this setup. There's another type of joystick that you can get that has all the pins broken out to one side, and it's a hell of a lot easier. You haven't got to solder in a common connection for ground, which is what I've done here. In hindsight, I would use the newer one because it's just a lot easier. But anyway, it's what I had to hand at the time. It was 2020. So that's a project built, and I'm going to show you some video now, which is of me using this joystick the other day to play The Empire Strikes Back on the Commodore 64 Ultimate. That's via a Tapwino, which is a, a tape emulator that was plugged straight into the Commodore 64 Ultimate's uh, cassette port, and it just behaves like a normal cassette player. You'll have also seen interspersed in this video, some video here and there of me actually building this. You can see what I was doing. I did have a voiceover for that as well as I was building it, but I've just omitted that. But yeah, I, I built a Commodore 64 joystick five years ago for my Commodore 64 of the time. And surprisingly, it worked on the Commodore 64 Ultimate. I say surprisingly, I had a good idea that it would work, given that it's got the ports on the side. You wouldn't just slap those on and just not make them work because you just get lots of bad feeling. But anyway, that's all for today. I'll see you tomorrow. Ta-da.